Hello, hello. Welcome, everyone. This is uh, Jake Ian Corelli. I am the uh, Productivity Committee Chairperson for the ALC at the Clearwater Market Center in Tampa Bay, Florida. Uh, I run a team, uh, Base Camp Tampa Bay here, and uh, you are dialed into our Productivity Committee call line. Uh, we meet on this call once a week to do a mastermind around just business production and challenges, successes, and yet once a month, we bring on a mega agent from around the country to talk about their business, and today is that day, so I'm super excited. Today we have uh, on the call Hudson Warren. Uh, Hudson, are you on with us? I'm here. Can you hear me fine? Yes, I can. Thank you. Thanks for being on. So, yeah, super excited. Hudson, you and I had a chance to meet at Bold uh, a few months ago. Yeah. And... Um, yeah, you're down in uh, Bonita Springs, is that right? Yes, which means nothing to most people. So, uh, Lee, <laughs> Florida, so Fort Myers, Naples, Cape Coral, um, all those areas, and then the small little towns like Bonita Springs and Estero. Sure, sure. Okay. Yeah, so like the southern west coast, right before you head to Alligator Island. Yeah, yeah. Any anything south of Punta Gorda, and then eventually it just turns into swamp. So anything south of Punta Gorda sure. is on the west coast. Yeah, you know, it's funny. Uh, we're in Tampa Bay, and so we get a weird uh, – it's very transient here. A lot of people moving down from up north, and we can almost tell where people are from by where in the state they move to. Oh, absolutely, and it's very transient here, like insanely. Yeah, yeah. It's like I find that New York City, New Jersey, they all go to Miami, right? Oh, <laughs> yeah, or Palm Beach or whatever, yeah. Yeah, and then here we get a lot of the upstate New York, Ohio, Michigan folks coming to Tampa Bay. What type of uh, folks are you getting moving into your area? Uh, we get a lot of Midwest and a lot of um, – we get so, we get a decent chunk of New England as well. Mm. Um, you know, Michigan, Ohio. Uh, we do sure. get some New Jersey. Um, we get a lot of Boston. We get a lot of um, – uh, gosh, Chicago, stuff like that, and, you know, Wisconsin. If it's cold and it snows, we basically get them, and yet we don't get a lot of the big city folks, like, other than Chicago people, I will say. Yeah, yeah, cool. Well, uh, let's go ahead and get it kicked off since we're right at the top of the hour. Uh, Hudson, you've been in the yeah. business for about 13 years. I guess you were in California for a while, then here in Florida. Last year, uh, you guys – closed 111 units for $28 million. You've got a big goal of 150 units, $38 million this year. So um, how I wanted to structure the call today is that have you talk a little bit about your team, what you guys are doing to stay in production, and then open it up to some questions from the audience. And uh, right now everyone is on mute. Um, I did that just to manage background noise. I will have a chance to unmute folks uh, once we go into the Q&A section. Um, and yet, let's kick it off. Tell us a little bit about your team, uh, what you guys are doing in same production. Uh, yeah, so we are uh, we're a smaller team um, right now. There's three of us in production and two administrative. And yeah, we're our big push. We got our start through um, expires and fizbos and all of that. And right the past year, year and a half or so, our our really big push has been. Um, has been referrals of all kinds. So we, we get a lot of agent referrals, and yet we really we are really heavily focused on our sphere. Uh, we're doing a lot of client events. Uh, we're doing giveaways and things like that. And we're really just working to love on our sphere, love on our database really hard, um, because I know that in the long run, that's what's going to keep us from being absorbed by, you know, the, the evil online companies of the world. <laughs> so, well, that's, a, that's what Gary tells us, right? Well, that's what he tells us. And it, the, the funny thing is, I mean, like, I, I already kind of thought that for the last couple of years. It's like eventually we start to become irrelevant, and yet the relationship is never irrelevant, and, and advice is never irrelevant. You know, the, you know, Open Door and Zillow and, and all of these other people, like, look, they can streamline things and they can make things seem easier than they are, and yet they can't run comps, not accurately. Mm -hmm. They're going to use an algorithm. They can't talk about schools. They can't talk about what's the location, how long does it take if you want to walk to dinner. Like they, 
they can't talk about that stuff. They can't get advice. They can't give advice, I should say. Um, mm. And I think that that's, that's where we save ourselves is we stay in super close relations with our people and they're going to want, they're going to want our input. I mean, most people do not want to go through the buying or selling process alone. They go to these other companies because they think it's going to be easier. And most of what these companies do are the same things that we can do and we're cheaper. Like, and that's, and, sure. and we just need to be better at telling our story about that. Like we need to be sharing the fact that, yeah, it's no big deal to do a simultaneous close. And yeah, we take all the work off your plate. Um, we need to be sh- we need to be sharing the fact that we actually, for the most part, cost less than it does to use one of these online systems to sell your house or to help buy a house. Right. Right. Um, we just we need to be educating our people, and if we're not staying in touch with them well, then we certainly don't have the opportunity to educate them. Gotcha. So you started. Yeah. You got you, you kicked off your business here in Florida with expireds and for sale by owners. And have sent yeah, and a lot of open houses. Open houses, God, I love those. That was another big thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, with your existing sphere of influence database, your SOI databank, uh, you mm-hmm. now are just loving on them. Giveaways. Tell us a little bit about what you're doing for your 36 Touch program, how that's going, and kind of what what are you doing to stay relevant, to stay top of mind with your database. Yeah, yeah, and I'll be honest. Like, we're not on a 36 touch. We're we're kind of we're we're in that whole command holding pattern where mm. we're we're waiting for some more things to come out. Um, we definitely we do our quarterly calls to them. That's that's a non-negotiable. And I think that for most agents, if they just did that, they could probably double their business because I mean, the, the voice-to-voice conversation is the biggest thing. So. We do our quarterly calls. Um, we do a monthly email. Um, I would like to get it to twice a month, and so we're we're waiting on some more some of this cool content that's coming out in the next couple months. Um, and then, yeah, we we've been doing a lot of client events. Um, we've we've learned the hard way that smaller is better than bigger for the event, <laughs> and and that it really this is not your birthday party. Like it doesn't matter who comes. Um, it doesn't matter. <laughs> It, it doesn't matter if anybody comes. It's not personal. The, the, the whole point of having client events is that it gives us multiple touch points before and after each event that are not who do you know that's looking to buy or sell or let me update you on the market when you don't care because you're not looking to sell in the next. Like, it, it gives us more fun ways to reach out that show that we care. Um, and so we've been doing a lot of that, and we've been intentional on keeping the event at more of a – community supportive level. So like if we're going to do, like we've done ice cream socials, well, we're not going to do Baskin Robbins or, you know, Dairy Queen. We're going to do some locally owned ice cream shop if we're going to invite people there because we want to mm-hmm. show that we also support the community. Um, you know, we did uh, like a happy, well, it wasn't even happy hour because it was during the day. We, you know, we did a, an event at a brewery. Well, it, it was like a, a one-off brewery. It was a smaller place. So you know, every time we're having an event now, we're we're pretty purposeful on making sure that it is like a locally owned business. Um, a, they're going to give you a better deal on the things that you have to pay for um, because they don't have corporate to answer to. And B, it just it really shows that you support the community. And I think people love you. You know, the whole point of loving on your database is that you're looking to build your own community. Well, you're probably going to do a better job at that if you're taking care of your greater community. Sure, sure. So you said smaller is better than bigger. What do you mean by that? So I mean, look, when we all turn into Lance Loken, which at one point I will be, like, it's cool to shut down the zoo completely and have a giant event that costs tens of thousands of dollars. Um, Our first client event we did was we did at a bowling alley. We rented out a whole section of it and, you know, paid for the bowling, we had it catered, we had giveaways, and, you know, we spent like two grand on it, which at the time was a lot of money for us to spend on it, and we had like, you know, like tumbleweeds. And, you know, we had a few people, we had like a third of the people that RSVP'd show up. And so Mm. it just wasn't really cost effective. And so what we've done since then is like, okay, so I brought up an ice cream social. Well, guess what? You make a deal with the ice cream shop owner that, 
whoever shows up, you put them on my tab, and this is our deal. It's this much per scoop, which is cheaper than what it would normally be. Um, the, the shop owner's happy because you're bringing awareness and new people to the shop. Mm -hmm. If two people show up, it costs you $8. If 250 people showed up, it costs you way more, and yet more people showed up, so that's fine. Like, so the yeah. idea is that not doing things that require a lot of prepaying and things that mm. – the same thing when we did the brewery. It was like we did have to buy a minimum, and yet it wasn't a crazy number. And, you know, we kind of joked. We're like, all right, well, if not enough people show up, we'll just each have an extra beer, whatever. Yeah, like, exactly. You know, we, we just – we made it – we're now we're making the event so that they don't cost us a lot up front and it's basically like we pay for what shows up um, because I think sure. you can really turn this into a money vacuum if you do it incorrectly which we did at first <laughs> so. yeah no I hear you we did a client event for the screening of the Lion King movie and we intentionally did a, a theater that was like a hundred 108 seats versus like a 400 seater and right you know it we had probably 80 show, which was pretty good, I thought. And uh, which is awesome. overall, yeah, yeah, yeah. So overall, that was awesome. Cool. So then you're you're now just loving. Uh, besides your client events, what else are you guys doing uh, to love on the database? Well, so the next thing we're doing. So we're actually this Thursday we're doing a giveaway, and we're and it, it's self serving. We're we're going to give away a Yeti cooler. You have to call in between certain hours. Um, and your entry is verifying all of your contact info. So part mm -hmm. of what we're doing now is that, you know, command is pretty much fully functional. Like they're still bringing out, um, you know, little pieces here and there, and yet it's fully functional. And so there's so much information you can put on there. So now rather than have to go through one by one, we're going to create some energy and have people call into us, and we're going to get people, you know, mailing address. We're going to get people's birthday and stuff like that so we can start doing some mail touches and we can start doing happy birthday calls and the, the things that we've kind of been missing out on, I mean, forever. Sure. So then they so call in, you get gather their yeah. info, which enters them into the drawing to then there's a giveaway. Yeah. And then there's a second giveaway that we won't tell them about until they call in, which is just that Okay, we also have, what are we doing, like the little Yeti, like the tumblers, which are like 50 bucks. We're like, you know, hey, for every name you can give us with contact information that might be looking to buy or sell real estate, um, we'll enter you in that second drawing. And so, because really what I want are the referrals, and yet I don't want people to feel pressured, you know, to not call in because they don't have one. So we're right. getting them so that you can follow up with them properly, and then we're also asking for referrals. Um, and I know some other agents that have done – this is the first time we're doing that. Um, I know other agents that have done similar events and had really, really impressive uh, results from them. So we're pretty sure. excited to see how that goes. Yeah, I've heard that a couple of, you know, time and time again, it's that exclusivity of the event where people then get a little bit more excited about it. Absolutely. There's, there's a really cheap, if you go on Amazon, there's a little book. It's, it's like, it's almost a pamphlet more than a book. It's called Perk Your Sphere. I don't know if you've heard of it before, Jake. Say again? Um, perk Your Sphere. Perk, like percolator? Yeah, like P-E-R-K. So Perk Your Sphere. It's actually written by a KW agent in New Jersey. Um, and it's just how she set up her thing. And we don't follow it by the book, and yet we took a lot from it. And it is very, like, you have to like tier your people. You have to do create. You have to create exclusivity, and events are great. There's some people just like things. So now that's why we're starting to get more into these giveaways. Uh, and a Yeti cooler is expensive. Yet it doesn't always have to be expensive. Like you can be at an outlet mall and see some really cheap purses, and you could do you know hey the first five people to leave us a five star review on Zillow or whatever like you know will get this prize like so it's, sure. it's, it's 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 an interesting book you can literally read it in an hour or two because it's it's really short um it's a great even if you don't follow it by the book it's a great thing to um to just kind of get some ideas from on how you can better um, interact with your sphere cool cool awesome so then you're you so you mentioned before that you've got a smaller team Tell us a little bit about what your team structure looks like and how you're 
um, organizing your lead generation through that? Yeah, so, I, so I'm the Rainmaker, obviously, and I, um, my other two agents, I allow people to list and work with buyers. Like, I don't do the whole buyer agent thing. Um, mm-hmm. I allow them to do both. Um, our, our rule of thumb is that your morning is made for lead gen, and we expect to see you every morning. I don't really want to see you in the afternoon because you should be with clients or knocking on doors or holding an open house. Like, if you don't have an appointment, you should be looking for more business, and yet you've already put your time in on the phone. So let's get you out of the office, and let's get you doing something else. Um, so we, we run, you know, we're, you know, we have a minimum standard that you do 24 units a year. Um, we're pretty, like I said, we structure our mornings. The afternoons are pretty much, unless we see a problem, I'm not policing you. Like, I, I, can't, I can't be spending eight hours of chasing you. I will chase you in the morning, and that's about all I'm going to do. <laughs> so <laughs> that's kind of what our setup is now. And gotcha. then our, as far as administrative, we have, uh, I have a director of operations that kind of just, like, started as my EA and now kind of just, he's like everybody's, like, real estate dad. Like, he just does everything. Um, and, you know, he keeps track of the numbers and making sure we stay profitable and, you know, putting events like this into play because I'm a big idea person and then ask me to follow through and it doesn't happen. So he's sure. kind of the guy that fills all the gaps. And then we have a client care manager who basically does all transaction coordination and all listing management, you know, getting, getting feedback, entering into the MLS, scheduling photos, that type of thing. So that's our current setup. Cool. Yeah, I'm, I love that. I mean, that's – it's definitely lean, and there's, you know, more than enough to do 150 transactions. Absolutely. We, you know, I spent a, a good two years really um, really looking to build a large team and slowly – you know, I'm a slow learner, so I started to realize that I'm really bringing in quantity and not quality. So we just wiped everybody out. And now we have two experienced <laughs> agents. Um, I, I, I've learned that new agents, there's exceptions to every rule, do not get me wrong, and yet new agents on a team can really be a time suck. Mm-hmm. Um, and they also, because they don't know any better, the minute they get a little bit of success, oftentimes they leave because they think they can do it better on their own, um, which sometimes might be true and oftentimes isn't. And what I've found is that I feel like when you take an experienced agent, They've already seen the good, the bad, and the ugly, and if they're joining a team, it's because they know they don't want to do it on their own. Sure. Um, and so I, I think the retention rate, you know, we've really just gone in that direction, and yet my educated guess is that I think our retention rate is going to be better because they already know. Yeah, so. yeah, I hear you. Cool. So then before we open it up to a couple of questions, I just wanted I know that you're on the path or are have become a Bulls coach. How's that going? I am a bull coach. I Congratulations. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. I go out on my first uh, solo uh, launches in October. I have one in Madison, Wisconsin, and one in Rockford, Illinois, which is a uh, suburb of Chicago. Cool. So I am super, super excited, and that is going to change the team makeup um, because I, def- I definitely can no longer work with buyers. I can definitely still work with sellers, and yet, you know, mm-hmm. I'm going to be traveling a lot. So, um, sure. so we're going we're gonna to see how people step up. I'm excited. I think, uh, I think we're just going to take it one day at a time, and we're going to figure it out. Cool. Well, what has that journey kind of done for your business? Um, we definitely – so the, the audition process for Bold is long and arduous and requires a lot of travel on top of all the learning and studying. So I, we're a small team. I am the bulk of the production still, and so we definitely hit a slump. And, you know, I knew that was going to come, and we're, we're catching up pretty quickly. We've had a, we're our worst month of the year. September will be back on track um, where we need to be. So it it was a short slump. Um, I think in the long run, it's going to be a huge, I mean, look, you want to become great at something, you teach it. So, you know, I I think it's really going to help me be a better leader and a better agent. And, um, you know, and the truth is being a bold coach is going to be really good for referral opportunities. I mean, my first two are in 
cold Midwest states, like, hello. Like, yeah. people move here. So I get... In October. Seven, yeah, I get seven hours a day for seven weeks, like, in front of these people. Like, they're, they're going to think of me and my team when they have a referral. So, um, so it's pretty exciting, and it's definitely... Um, you, you learn how to be a high-level coach, and you start looking at everything differently. So it's pretty exciting. I'm sure. Yeah, that's awesome. I'm glad to hear yeah. that. Cool. All right. Well, um, anything else you want to talk about your team or, or production or what you guys are doing to stay in production before I open it up to some questions? No, not really. We are really focused in on – it's not saying that we'll never call another expired or FISBO. We are, like, barrel – like, we are locked and loaded at our database right now because I just truly – Gary's smart. I trust him, and I really think that in order to not only stay relevant, also to get to the next level and go from the 150 to the 200 to the 250 to 300 and really keep growing it, because I am not one to do with complacency, um, I think mm. we really need to just focus on that database and, um, and just filling it naturally. Like, we don't need to add 100 people a week. We need to take care of the people that are already there, and we are going to sure. organically build it is kind of how I feel. So that's really what our focus is. Awesome. Cool. Well, thanks for that. Um, what I'm going to do next is open it up to some questions. So I'm going to unmute, um, assuming it doesn't create too much chaos on the line. We do have quite a few people on. Uh, if it does, I'll re-mute it, and we'll do the Q&A. And yet, I'll just go ahead and unmute. And um, if not, then we'll backtrack and do it another way. And yet, All so if you do have a if you do have a question um, for Hudson, please uh, talk up. You are unmuted. And if we don't, no judgment. And yet hey, I do have – yeah. Hi. I wanted to ask, what, um, Hudson, what, like, traits or, like, assessments do you use to add new team members? Um, we're, we definitely use the KPA. Um, I, I will tell you, we're, we don't follow career visioning literally 100%. I mean, I'm not going to lie. And yet we use a lot from career visioning. It's a really good, I mean, I've been with KW long enough to remember the other way, which was like, good, career visioning is great. Um, so we definitely, we KPA everybody. Um, one thing, I know that KW is moving away from, like, the disc profile, and yet I love that thing. So that's my initial qualifier. Like, when, we're, when we have an ad out for a job, it literally when they apply, it's, they're instructed to complete the disc assessment and send it in. If they don't do that, with, like, within 24 hours, we're just, we're not. I mean, they've already self-selected out. Um, if they do that, we do a phone screening, and once we've done a phone screening, if there's still interest, then we have them take the KPA, and then at that point, we would have them come in for an interview. Um, and then we don't hire on the first interview. We, we will only hire on the second and sometimes the third. It depends on how things go. Does that kind of answer your question? I was actually curious, like, for the you, – you have two agents. Like, what did you – what made you select those two? Like, uh, cult does that cultural make sense? fit. No, okay. cultural fit. Um, I look. I've hired some people over the years that were really strong in production and really poisonous to be on the team. And I feel like anybody who is willing to learn and be coached can produce at a high level. And so I want people – when my team has done its best, because we've definitely looked, like we're not immune, like we have had some high highs and some low lows, and when we've done our best, it's been a family. And, like, no hokiness, like, no joke, like, really a family. Like, we all actually want to hang out outside of work. And so that's why we kind of wiped clean, and we are – we're working to get back to that. And so, yeah, like, if they're, if they're not a fit on, like, a cultural – personal level, then I don't really care how talented they are or what their resume says. Great. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for asking. Great question. You know, I hear that time and time again is you can train a skill and yet you can't train this culture and motivation. Absolutely not. And I will tell you, you can have a really, I mean, my, my team has imploded on me once and what it imploded, it was we had toxicity in the team. I mean, I'm going to tell you right now, like, mm -hmm. 
we had a person on at one point, and I would never name a name, and yet that person was uh, just a dark soul. Like, I don't even know what to tell you. We really got fooled in the interview process um, and ignored some things. And um, it, it really jacked up the team, and we lost good people over it. So, yeah, I just I won't do it anymore. Like, if, if I don't... If I don't want to, like, go to happy hour or go meet your kids or know who your spouse is, then I don't want you on the team. It's not worth it. No doubt. Cool. Other questions uh, out there from the audience? Wow. Was that a question? Was that a question? That just okay. background. Hey, Hudson, I have a question for you. Yeah. Uh, what does your team lead gen look like in the morning? So that's also changed. I mean, for, for years it was you, are, you call the new expired, then you call new FISBOs, then you call old expired, and you're calling your sphere on your own timer in the afternoon. Well, no, we're still, we're still calling new expired. Um, and, you know, if they want to call FISBOs, that's fine. And yet it's, we're actually, we want them spending time on their database and calling leads. So um, we make sure that there's at least a half hour in the morning for follow-up, and that depends on how much they have. You know, we do weekly kind of pipeline meetings to see where they're at. Sometimes they're going to need maybe an hour for follow-up. And yet it – so our our morning is everybody's in at 8.30. Administrative agent doesn't matter. Everybody's in at 8.30. Um, We do a morning power-up. So – you know, we go around and we, there's usually some sort of like inspirational video or a quote that we'll talk about. And then we, we all share a gratitude for the day and we're not supposed to share the same ones. I mean, not literally never again, but you know, not the same thing day after day or week after week. Um, so we share a gratitude because we want to start off with high energy and then we, um, and then we do script and role play. So we do a 30 minute power up. And then the expectation is that you are doing lead gen, so whether it's your sphere, expired, FISBO, um, that you are on the phone making contacts from 9 to 11, and that 11 to 12, or if you don't have a ton to follow up with, 11.30 to 12, whatever, that, that window is for your, your follow-up time. Um, and then the rest of the day, again, if you're hitting your numbers, I don't care what you're doing. If you're not hitting your numbers, then I want to know if you're – um, holding an open house or knocking on some doors, or if you don't want to do any of that, then you do need to come back into the office and make calls. And um, Because I just, you know, we, I think we all see it with agents. I'm sure we've all seen that agent. I'm sure at times we've been that agent that, you know, they do their three hours or whatever they do, and then they go and they do nothing all afternoon. It's like if you're not hitting your numbers, you can't do that. So... And uh, other than the pipeline uh, report, is there any other number tracking that your agents are reporting to you? Um, yeah, no. So, yeah, we, were, we, we track contacts and appointments. We track all the basic numbers so that we can, you know, we don't need to know, like, super detailed conversion. And yet, mm-hmm. if you're a little behind in your business, I want to be able to tell you, okay, cool, well, next week you need to talk to this many people a day to catch up. So, you know, we do the basic conversions, like how many contacts to an appointment, how many appointments to a, con, um, you know, to a listing, whether it's a buyer or seller, and then, you know, how many contacts to an actual sale. Because I want to be able to give them value and tell them, you know, how to get where they need to go. And I want them to know, and I want to know what our numbers are as a team so we can constantly work to improve our conversions. Thank you. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Cool. Thank you for that question. Uh, we've got time for one or two more. Anyone else have a question for Hudson? Please, not everybody at once. It's super overwhelming. <laughs> I know. I have to mute all the lines. This, this, this continues. Um, well, with that, let's see. I had one follow-up to that. No, that was pretty much it. So um, I, I love the sound of your morning and with your team. Um, I think that that, that, makes, that goes a long way to think about how you're structuring it and the expectation for your day. When, awesome. when are you yeah. meeting with, uh, when are you meeting with uh, team members for coaching? Um, in the, in the, it's usually midday, like early afternoon usually. So and we do a one and we do a once a week team meeting. 
cool. Yeah, I feel like you don't, there's always this fine line of like not wanting to bog them down with meetings, and yet you do need to be sitting with them once a week. And it might not even be 30 minutes every time. It might be 15. Um, right. And yet you've got, to sit, you've got to give face time every week, and it's got to be valuable. And they've got to, like, we won't meet with them if their numbers aren't up to date because we don't want to spend the meeting time getting numbers from them. Like, we want to spend the meeting time actually giving them value and, you know, assessing the numbers. What's the plan? Um, and then same thing with the team meeting. Like, we're quick and efficient. Like, we don't sit in there and, like, chit-chat. It's like, no, like, we can go to lunch after the meeting if you guys want to chit-chat. Like, let's put the meat in here and let's do That's something right, every week and to do it forward. Urban. Yeah, yeah. I hear you. Cool. So, awesome. awesome. Any one last opportunity? Any other questions that anyone has out there before we let you go? Awesome. All right, great. Well, hey, again, I want to thank everyone for their time. Hudson, real quick, before everyone jets off the line, tell us again where you're at and how we can get referrals to you. Yeah, yeah. So Southwest Florida, so all of Lee and Collier County. If you're Florida, you'll know that. Um, Naples, Fort Myers, um, Cape Coral, Acero, Bonita. Um, if you if it's Southwest Florida, just call me. If I can't do it, I can tell you who can. Um, and yeah, my phone number, my direct number is two three nine nine eight nine one seven seven three. It's I'm also easy to find on Facebook because not a lot of people are named Hudson Warren, so you will not have to sift through people. Um, you can connect with me there, and um, yeah, the agent referrals are a huge part of our business. We we treat them like gold, and uh, we would certainly love to help. Be a resource. Awesome. Well, cool. Well, hey, thanks again, everyone. I also have recorded this line. You'll see it come up on KW Connect. Um, I'll put a link to it there, and we do have some really amazing agents for both September and October that are going to be lined up. Um, and so keep an eye open and uh, let me know if we can do anything for you here in the Tampa Bay Market Center. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.